All right. All right, we are live. So it's been a while since I did a live stream, and these always make me so <laughs> nervous. Um, can you please tell me if it sounds good with the microphone? Because I have no idea, and I haven't been setting the gains for a while, so let me know. Anyways, I want to build some new systems, obviously. That's pretty much what I do all the time. But um, I want to hear what you guys have to say, because some of my newer videos were more advanced, and I feel like some of the acronyms and stuff lost people, but my more advanced members really liked it. But do you do you guys think I should do beginner videos again? Because I feel like I've done so many beginner videos that, I mean, <laughs> if I do any more, I'm going to be saying the same thing like a hundred times. So I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts are on that. And I also want to do some wind power videos but it's very difficult out here in the desert because the winds are either 60 miles per hour or zero miles per hour. So it's not like the ocean where you always have a constant fresh breeze. So I don't know if I should even make a video about that because if the wind is that strong, I mean, you want to flag out those blades and so that it doesn't damage itself because if the RPM is too high, then it can destroy itself. So I don't know if wind power is a good idea. I know it's fun and it's a motor and like you get to wire up three phase AC to charge a battery. I mean, it's pretty interesting, right? But I don't know if it's very practical. So I would like to hear what you guys have to say about that. Also, I want to make bigger systems, but I don't have any room on my roof. I was going to put, I'm going to put like a 10K on this roof of my house, but um. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of room to work up there now. I mean, I think I can fit just that much. And if I get any more electric vehicles, I'm going to need more solar power. My electric bill is not doing too good. Oh, there's a cat in the background. All right, I'm going to read some of your guys' comments. Hold on. Oh, it sounds great. I'm so glad. Okay, with the microphone, that's good to know. By the way, before we get started, I want to mention this book, Basic Electricity. What I like about it is that how they used to create certain meters and machines for like um, measuring electricity, they just used coils and resistors in very strategic ways. And it's really fun to learn about like the older stuff, like how people, you know, came up with some of this stuff. But yeah, because when you just, I don't know, when you learn it now, um, you don't learn about how we... Uh, discovered some of this stuff like chemistry like how we first discovered you know atoms and how they are different from each other it was it was a lot of like uh, strenuous thinking involved in lots of experiments which are pretty neat anyways let's see a mini split ac unit people love mini splits i have never been that big of a fan i know they work well and they're more efficient but what, why do you want to do a mini split and what kind of experiments could we do with a mini split? Because I need to have some purpose. I can't like make a video and be like, hey, this is my mini split air conditioner. Wow, it works just as advertised and that's it. And then turn off the camera. Like, I don't know. I mean, I guess I could do an energy audit with my current window air conditioner. My kitty cat's playing with his little toy over there. I don't know why I put that toy over there. I wanted it out of the range of the camera. All right, hold on. I'm going to move it. All right, come here, kitty. All right. Back. Build a solar Bitcoin miner. Make a portable charging system for the Tesla. Hmm. You know what we could do is a split phase output mobile system. That would be pretty cool. You know what? With those LV2424s, because the air intakes on the sides, we could like sandwich them together and then put it on a cart and then have like a big old battery on the bottom. Because with two of those, we could put like 4,000 watt array. And in a day, how much can we produce out here? I'm getting about seven hours of sunshine at max peak um, standard test condition rate. So let's see, 4,000 times, we'll, we'll say seven. 
So 2800, so you could actually recharge a Tesla in about three and a half days with that system and it could fit on a cart. That would be pretty incredible. By the way, some news in my life, you guys, I deleted all of my social media pretty much. So I deleted Facebook, Reddit. Um, what's the other one? I deleted everybody off of Instagram and I made it private. I also deleted um, all of the news feeds off of my phone. Um, yeah, and I don't like any of them anymore. I think it like rots your brain. And I feel like a lot of those little tidbits of information about new tech I could learn just by reading a couple companies' press releases and a couple books that are relevant. And that's it. I don't need to waste my whole day looking through news feeds and social media feeds. Uh, yeah, that's a big change in my life. I don't want to be exposed to like social media. I don't like it. It makes me feel kind of stupid. Oh, hey, Steve. Steve is here. Yeah, it's very overwhelming. And with a lot of the news lately, it's not very relevant for my life. And I know a lot of it's very unfortunate, but um, I feel like the information that I'm absorbing from social media um, isn't really helping me. Like everything that we could learn about, you know, the disease going around, I can't say the name of it because this is a live stream and it's probably, I think it's uh, monetized. But anyways, I could learn all of that through books or just a couple websites online. I don't need to be bombarded with social media feeds constantly with, uh, you know, a lot too much information. It's hard to, hard to focus. Heating pads from Canadian solar. You know what? I'm not a big fan of the lower temperature heating solutions anymore. Um, I remember there is some data on one of the YouTube videos about, uh, the degradation or um, with cold weather charging with lithium iron phosphate, it's not that bad if it's at a low C rate and it's practically non-existent. So I might just start recommending people build bigger batteries. Um, there's going to be also more data from studies coming up, but yeah, I, I'm not is I'm not thinking about that too much. I think it's important to have a low temperature cutoff at the solar charge controller, but at the battery, I mean. I know it's very horrible and bad, and if you do charge quickly, it will destroy it instantly. But if you have a solar battery and it's huge, um, I don't think we should really care that much. Yeah, social media is cancer, Joshua. I agree. I mean, seriously, when you like scroll through YouTube, like you know the uh, not even your subscription, but your home, it's just all of this constant news and you're just constantly being bombarded with stuff. So I'm trying to like stop doing that and focus on reading and studying and experimenting on my own projects. Um, I feel like even with science YouTubers, you just get bombarded with lots and lots of um, typically not very relevant information or very useful information. Like I know some of the YouTubers are just trying to entertain, but like I, I do not like to learn something unless I can actually benefit my life and others. Um, that's why I like solar power and batteries and stuff. Cause it's so useful. I mean, it's incredibly useful. So yeah, I don't want to learn a bunch of science. That's with like, I used to love rocket engines and astronomy and um, planetology, like different atmospheres on different planets. And I would sit there for days and read those books. But I felt <laughs> there was this moment I was in the library. I was like, why am I reading this? Like the chances that I'm going to go to another planet are pretty small. Um, the chances of me building actual rockets is pretty small. This was before SpaceX was around in the Falcon 9 and all this. But it was just the Russians and like, I loved, I loved what the Russians were doing back in the day. And like, they have pretty much all of the, you know, first time, first man, first woman in space, first uh, uh, animal, first radio broadcast message, first, um, I think they're the first ones, yeah, orbital velocity. And then I was like, okay, this is really fun and great, but what am I going to do with this information? So yeah, I prefer like the DIY stuff, stuff that I can actually do at home. Hey, kitty. You guys, my cat Onyx, he's growing back his fur. We had to shave him because he was really matted. He's from the shelter. He was from the streets. I know everyone says that they have like a shelter cat or a shelter dog. He was straight from the streets. He, he was caged. 
and they were going to use him as a uh, work cat for the casinos. But, yep, this little guy, he's so sweet, so he went to the uh, normal shelter. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, my gosh, we got we got donations. Holy cow, I wasn't even looking over there. You guys are so sweet. Thank you so much. Will, on the battery 12-volt lithium iron phosphate bill, do you think it would be easier just to buy a battle board? I mean, after getting a BMS, it seems like you really don't save much. Yeah, if it's easier, just... Uh, just buy a battery. I mean, I love doing it yourself and building the battery for cheap. And some of the raw cells, some of the distributors that are coming out right now are going to be selling these things for dirt cheap. I mean, you guys have no idea. Like, imagine this $440 for a 180 80 amp hour um, raw cell battery plus like $100 for the BMS. So, I mean, we're looking at like like right now a $1,300 battery being like $500 but we're still waiting for those distributors to figure it out. Um, yeah, but yeah, once that comes out, that's going to be really, really cool. And uh, yeah, Battleborns are great though, because they're reliable and dependable and all that good stuff. And you have a good warranty, but yeah, if you want it to be easy, you can just throw those in there. Um, if you want to spend more money, discover battery is pretty cool. If I was doing like a grid tie system with battery backup, I'd probably do like a soul arc with a discover battery. Battleborns are better in my opinion for high vibration environments, like mobile systems, like RVs. Because if you have like a raw cell system, you better make sure that those cells and how you situate them will be um, very like strong because the, the terminals, the balance leads, everything needs to be perfect. And if you screw that up, you can run into some problems. So I like the Battleborn for mobile systems, especially if you have never built a battery before, you might as well just do that. Stationary batteries are a million times easier. You just throw some cells on the ground, throw a BMS on it and you're done. We got another question here from a donation. So many questions, but have you ever seen anyone use a solar hot water pads behind the panels in order to cool them whilst heating the water? There were a couple startups doing that. I don't know what happened to them. It seems like the best idea, the best of both worlds. I think they really need to develop that technology. I'm surprised that they haven't actually, because yeah, temperature coefficient of the materials, you're gonna have a higher output of power when the cold, the temperature is lower. And yeah, you have all this water going through your house that you need to heat up. So it seems smart. I think the hardest part, is making an all-in-one package where you can get the plumbing of the house and the electrical all working together with the system. So you're gonna have to run some pipes up to your house and just thinking about the water pressure, I mean, maybe you might, I don't know if, yeah, the, the public supply should be able to push water up there, but I don't know. I mean, they have those water heaters on the roof anyways. I don't know how those work though. Do they have a pump? But yeah, you have to make sure that everything kind of works together, but, um. Also, if you want to scale it, um, you'd have to like make it a scalable water heating system so that when you connect those solar panels, you're connecting water pipes that will not leak. You know what? That's probably a hard part too is you have plumbing in a place that gets really hot and really cold. And my dad's a mechanic. And if you think about exhaust system next to like a water hose or a heater hose for the cooling system of an engine or an internal combustion engine, you know, those are the first ones to break. So you have to make a system that will be able to handle those temperature extremes. Um, yeah, that's a lot to think about. It would be cool if they could do that, though. Also, those panels would be pretty darn heavy. I mean, currently, you know, the commercial size panels and residential are pretty big. If you have all those, you know, water coils attached to that thing, and you'd want it to be manufactured so they're touching the moment because you know, you want to conduct as much heat away from it as possible. So you're going to have to use some form of thermal paste or a coupler system. And then, yeah, that, that's just a lot of things to think about right there. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm i sorry. That's a lot of tangent thoughts. But yeah, I think we need it. But you know what would be nice is a ground mount system for that. That would probably be more easy. My real life and YouTube is my only social media. I feel like YouTube is the only social media that I have now too. Um, I do have my Instagram, but I only have my close friends and close family, like people that I actually like. And my rule for keeping people on Instagram is that if I'm on a road trip 
and I have to go 20 minutes out of my way to see this person, then they're more, they're important enough for me to keep them on my Instagram. Because usually you start collecting all of these random half friends and acquaintances from like college and high school. And you're like, oh, they were so much fun back then. I'm going to keep them on my Instagram. But I don't want to keep up with people anymore. I don't want to keep giving them my little updates and stuff. I don't, I mean, and then they'll try to be supportive and be like, oh, wow, Will, that's so cool. I'm so glad you did this. And I'm so glad you did that. But, and I like the support at first, but once you get bombarded with it, you get like a hundred messages. Like this channel, I'll get a hundred emails in one day and it's impossible for me to read them. It's literally impossible. I will not have a life. So that's what I'm trying to contend with now is with Instagram, just I wiped out like I had 4,000 followers on there, which isn't much because I didn't really post anything <laughs> really good. It was just memes and stuff. And I had close friends on there, but it was just filled with all these other people and YouTube people. And I mean, I, I love the fans and the support and stuff when I am talking about only solar, but there is a boundary that doesn't need to be crossed when, with my daily life. And I think a lot of YouTubers hit that point. You can see it in their eyes after a couple of years. Um, you can see in there, they're like, all right, I'm tired of this. But uh, especially those live streamers that are on there all day long. That's my opinion. I just see them and I can tell, I can tell that attitude that they start getting. They're just like, oh man. And so then they start separating, you know, their personal life from their professional life. It's important. I mean, very simple points I'm talking about right now, but it's, it's very important. Watch out, you guys. Social media can screw you up. Is a total off-grid system doable only off of Amazon with a thousand dollars? Wow, I don't know about that, man. Um, you could do a lead-acid battery with a pulse-width modulation controller and a modified sine wave inverter, and you can totally keep it at a thousand dollars. It will last about two years. Um, the inverter can catch on fire. Uh, the PWM. Um, is just so inefficient, or it's not inefficient, it's the power availability. It's just so low that, yeah, it's just, it's not, it's not gonna be a fun time. You could buy used solar panels with that system. You could, it's possible, and you could power like a laptop or something. It's gonna be very heavy, very inefficient, and who knows how long it will last for, but you absolutely can do it. But once you build your first system, you always feel like an idiot because then you'll be like, wow, I could have saved my money by buying this MPPT instead of all of these solar panels. And then you'll be like, wow, this is the third inverter I've gone through this year. I could have just spent my money once and then I would be fine. And then your batteries, when you start swapping out lead acids every two to four years, you're like, wow, I've spent multiple thousands of dollars on this. I could have just bought one set of lithium batteries. So that's the thing that's pretty horrible about lith or about solar is that you have to spend money initially unless you're going to get burned. I got burned. I spent my money on so many batteries. I bought flooded cell batteries. I bought, you know, AGM, multiple batteries, multiple times. And then once I got lithium, um, I was kind of set. I've, I, I would just sell those batteries when I was done with them. And then I would buy a new one because people know they'll last for a very long time. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Oh, did you see my earlier super chat? I did not see it. Hold on. Oh, did I miss it? I don't see your super chat. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. N Nadies, Nadies L girl. Like to build an AC battery, like an AC coupled system for grid tie. Is that what you're talking about? See my prior super chat. I don't see your prior super chat. Can you remind me? I don't see it on here. I'm sorry. Can you, yeah, just write it out again. Pat is trying to upgrade my battle battery bank. I have two 100 amp hour Renogy Pure Gel batteries. What could I do to expand the battery? Because I think the batteries are disconnected. I don't want to replace them yet. Uh, that's the big problem with those. Any lead acids, you want to match them by age. And adding new batteries, if it's less than a year, you can add some and it'll be okay. You might have one battery cell die before the others and you'll have to swap it out. But 
there's not a whole lot you can do there. All right, let's see if she commented back about her super chat. Sure, I'd like to build a portable battery for truck SUV that could power a 5,000 watt AC overnight. Um, honestly, just fill the entire roof with panels and, and try to buy as big of a battery as you can afford. You aren't explaining BMSs well enough. What features do you guys want me to talk about? I feel like most of them are over voltage, under voltage, sometimes cell deviation, and some other things like with the FEB-based systems. I guess we could dive more into like uh, the Chargery and also the SBMS. I covered it very briefly, and I feel like people that are using those systems kind of understand what they're getting themselves into, and they'll actually read the manual. Um, when I'm talking about DALI BMSs, there's no pr programmable settings. You just kind of hook it up. So I feel like there's not a whole lot to talk about there. But yeah, let me know if you have any specific things about BMSs. Use a thermal image camera to stress test your system. I am so cheap. I mean, I'm doing pretty well finally. And I finally paid off the house. And I'm still like dreading to buy a thermal camera. I need to do that though. You guys are right. Do you think having a positive and negative bus bar are necessary? No. And I also do not like disconnect switches. People will disagree with me on that, but there's no point because if something bad were to occur, um, you won't be there to turn it on or off. And bus bars are only necessary if you have to use them, especially for marine builds or large battery banks. But if I can not use it, I'm not going to use it. I see some people, they'll have only a couple batteries and they want to overbuild their system. They just make it so beautiful. They have all of these pretty colors. Everything's labeled. I'm not going to do that unless it actually matters. If it's a massive system, then I'm going to do that. But I don't think it's worth my time to like add all of that. I've seen some incredible builds too. Like they'll have the fuse block going out to all of these like um, lighted switches with LEDs. And it looks pretty. You know, it's really cool. But... I like autonomous systems. I like things that I program it once and I don't have to touch it. That's what I love. But uh, yeah, if you, if you want to do it, if you want to add all those bus bars and all those switches, you can do it. Ah, oh, decibel measure for the inverters. Oh man, that is so smart. I need to do that too. Thank you, Daniel. Actually, I'm going to write it on my little notepad. Actually, I need to write it on my phone notepad. I'll do, oh God, I, I need to do it now. I'll, I'll totally forget. Decibel test inverter. Okay. Solid state relays and 48 volt systems. Surprisingly difficult because most control voltages are lower than 48 volts. Very true. You know what I always used to do is if I had a converter that was stepping down to 12 volts, I would use that to control solid state relays or relays or whatever, because 12 volt stuff is so common. And if you already are going to have a converter circuit, you might as well just throw it on there. A troubleshoot video with the follower. You know, the most common troubleshooting thing I've seen on the forum and on my emails and my friends calling me is they're like, Will my solar panels are only producing 10 watts and it's a thousand watt array. Almost every time, almost every time the batteries are full. And so what I tell them is I tell them to put a load on the inverter, like a, a blow dryer. And then they're like, oh my gosh, I've got 800 watts of power now. It's, it cracks me up, man. Fuses would be a good topic to cover. Yeah. And also just OCPD in general, like why you should use different fuses or why you should use a circuit breaker. Oh, Dan Dixon has a cool idea. So what we do is people visit me and then I act as a guide for system improvements. That would be pretty fun. 
actually, I would love to critique people's systems because the errors that people make can cause fires. And when you go to like van life and RV meetups, it's crazy what people do. Like, I can't even tell you how many conductors have zero OCPD and they're just running all over the place. And I'm just like, I could not sleep at night if that were to be in my anywhere near me. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Let's see. Wow, we've got, we have 570 people watching. I try to not look at that side of the screen because it makes me nervous. It's just so many people. The National Electric Code begs to differ about what, Kings? Uh, I can't say your name. <laughs> it's inappropriate. I don't play Fortnite. I don't do that. I play Apex Legends, and I mean Wraith, if you guys want to know. Yeah, the thermal cameras are $500, man. Ah, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I can just use my hands, man. I can just, like, feel the heat. Even the cells. I just touch all the cells. I touch the connectors, and then I'm like, all right, it looks good. Um, I'm doing a test right now. It's programmed to cut off, though, so I don't have to worry about it. But Oh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Smith. Stuff it full of solar and batteries, right? Almost everybody's problems with solar is not having enough solar. They'll be like, can I power an air conditioner? It's like, just get more, more panels. And yes, you can. You can power whatever you want. What's going on with your plantar fasciitis channel? I haven't checked on it for a while. I made one video about something that I learned about um, loading tendons. And when there's like a... Uh, what is that? Osis, when it starts eating itself. I made a video about that in like negative reps and stuff, but it's a pretty basic video. I feel like I have like hit every single topic on that channel. So I stopped posting to that channel. But if you guys have a, something that I, that I should add to the plantar fasciitis channel, that would be cool. But yeah, let me know. No, I do not take medication at all. I don't know why you're asking that. But yeah, no alcohol, no drugs, no nothing. And I'm going to be 30 this year. And I'm still, I've never felt the effects of alcohol. I love it, man. I'm so glad that I can say that. I wanted to do that when I was really young. I was like, I'm not doing it. I don't see it as being logical at all. And so <laughs> 20 years have gone by and I'm still not doing it. Oh, 29, but you know what I'm saying from that age. I was 11 years old and I made that decision. I just, I remember looking around me and I was like, I'm not doing that. Titan generator. You know, what's funny is I took the AC 200 out. Like it's in the shed still, but I took it off all the solar arrays and I have only the Titan running because I had to make that retest video and it's so <laughs> God awful heavy. The thing is like 110 pounds with all the batteries. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it there. And with the AC 200, I had to wait till the release. And then I felt bad because I released that video before the other YouTubers. So I was like, you know what? I'll just let the other YouTubers do that. And then I'll just focus on the Titan because I don't want to move it off my table. And I've been testing it a lot. And so far, it just works, which is pretty nice. What I don't like about the Titan is that the chargers get really hot. They are UL listed chargers but they get crazy, crazy hot. So like you can't touch them hot. Um, yeah, they're running right now, actually. I like it though. I mean, it just works. It's nice, but we'll see. You know what? I want to start testing more expensive systems. So what I might do now that this house is paid off is I might buy another house that's completely non-HOA and then I'll throw like four solar arrays on it and then I'll be able to have like a high enough voltage to have multiple grid tie systems going. And then I'll just use my Tesla car as a, um, as a load dump or whatever. I'll just put all the power into that thing because it just, I drive so much and it loves it. I'm waiting for battery day for Tesla. And then September 15th, once they announce whatever they're going to announce, which I'm not sure, um, I think it's going to be a higher specific energy, but I don't think it's going to be a 30% improvement, but we'll see if they can prove me wrong. That would be incredible. Um, and they say that they might have a million mile battery, but we're going to see about that as well. But I think they're going to have a played 
Model S that can do 500 miles. And I think I'm going to buy that because I really like the Model S, but it's not a car for driving fast or fun. It's a very comfortable ride kind of car. It's kind of like a grandma car, but it looks really cool and it has a crazy zero to 60. But when you drive the Model 3 Performance all the time, like today I was doing nonstop donuts, just like just one after the other. And that car is so much fun. I almost spun out. I was so stupid. That's why I moved out to Nevada. I can go out to the middle of nowhere in the desert and do just so much fun stuff. And anyways, um, not on public roads though for the donuts. I actually go on a private area for that one. Anyways, uh, so <laughs> much fun. But yeah, once you get used to that and then you, you drive the Model S or Model X or any other electric vehicle, you're like, oh wow, okay, this thing is so heavy. I can I cannot turn this vehicle. So yeah, I'm not I'm not a big I why I want the Model S is so that I can um, go on road trips because if you have 500 mile range, I can go to San Diego on two char or one single stop. And once I get there, I have like 30% of my battery. So that's pretty cool, but it would be nice just to stop once a day for lunch, charge up the car and then I'll be set. Anyways, if I have a large battery like that, a 500 mile range electric car, and I have a house with multiple solar arrays, I could have like a soul arc. I could have this new company that's coming out with a new product. I can't talk about it, but it's gonna be super cool lithium iron phosphate backup grid tie system. And then I could have like a discover battery system, like all the systems out there. That would be pretty cool. I'm not a fan of like in phase or solar edge, their storage solution. I've noticed that I think at Sunrun, they're using a Tesla power wall with an in phase. So that's like an AC coupled grid tie system. And <laughs> I, I don't like that. I want like something like the Soul Arc. It's designed for off grid and it uses on grid and it has all the switching mechanisms that are almost into instantaneous. It's the fastest on the market. So in with this house, I don't have enough space to make a second array. So I need to do that. I need to get a non HOA house. I could stick my family in it and then I'll make a bunch of cool videos, right? But I'm waiting for the house prices to drop a little bit because I know they're going to. Um, the eviction rate is so high. Like in San Francisco, it's one in 13 people last month are moving out. And one of my friends, he has renters, all of them left. So I know that as the evictions, we have like a program here to help people with it. But once that's all cleared out, I'm sure the real estate market will drop. And then I can buy a massive house with a huge roof. And then we can do some real solar testing. And it doesn't need to be nice. I don't really need a nice house. I just want a place where it can be like, um, I can do anything. I can build whatever I want. I kind of want some land too, because I want a nice uh, ground mount array as well. I'm scared of ground mount arrays because we have like 60 mile per hour winds. But yeah, let's look at the comments. I haven't seen the comments for a while. Hold on. Oh my gosh, $50 donations? Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I Hold on, let me read all of these. I can't, oh, you just gave a donation. You didn't even ask a question. Thank you so much. Wow. All right, let's read some of these questions. Please explain how small four cell panels can be rated at a thousand watts. Well, some large 21 cell panels rate at only 150 watts. I think, are you talking about, I don't think I've seen a four cell panel that's rated at a thousand. That's impossible. Those cells are a specific size and voltage because that's like the size that you can make the crystal. Um, can you show me that? Maybe a, a poly panel and it's just sprayed on there. Could, yeah, I'd have to have a link or something. Do you have a name of that? I haven't seen that before. Sometimes you have half cells and then they put them in series so you'll have a higher voltage because you have just so many in series, but I hear that those are the the rejects from the nice solar panels, and then they cut the cell in half, and then they just make half cell panels. I could be wrong. I'm not an industry expert about those, but that would be interesting to know about. If you guys have anything to chime in on, <laughs> when are you going to start cracking modem batteries? Pretty much never, pretty much never. <laughs> 
<laughs> I see these other YouTubers, man. And I mean, good job. It's amazing. And I'm glad they get tons of views, but I, I don't want to do that all day long. Plus, like just safety wise, I like brand new lithium iron phosphate cells and they're getting so cheap now. Um, yeah, man. And the cheaper the new ones get, the cheaper the used ones will get. So I think the used market will also drop in price as well. Like, you know, those BYD packs, those were very expensive batteries when they were first on the market um, for the grid um, grid size system, grid management ones. Um, utility, I'm sorry, I'm mess, mess, mixing up my words. But yeah, once those drop in price, also the used variant will be much cheaper. I have a 200 amp hour um, lithium iron phosphate wired and serious while sitting and I build my system. What voltage should I store them at? Well, you should always do a coulomb meter and then go to 50% state of charge and then let them sit at that. But with me personally, 3.1 or 3.2. I know the curve is pretty excessive, but as long as it's not super low, you'll be fine. The only thing that you have to worry about is them self-discharging. It's like 3% per month. So like if you have them at 50%, they should be fine for a year, no problem. Ooh, fire extinguishers for electronics. That would be fun. That's a great idea. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Hold on. Got some good ideas here. Is there any clipping with my voice? Let me know if the mic is still sounding good. Oh, Nate, I have an older video talking about higher voltage battery systems and why you should use them over a lower voltage, such as 12 volt. Check out that video. It pretty much covers every point. I was going to redo that video, but I covered everything and it has a lot of views. So I would check that out. Do you think the new solar generators will eventually take on market share from the traditional gas generators? Marlon asks. The moment that a solar generator is cheaper than a gas generator, yeah, but right now they're too cheap. If you go to Harbor Freight, you can buy a massive generator and you can get split phase output. You can get some serious power with those things. Um, and with the automatic transfer switch with your house, you can just you can power your house in a grid down situation with a blue eddy or something. There's no way there's no way. So yeah, it's not, it's not even close right now, but you don't have to give it gas. So it's cheap as heck. So if all you have to do in a backup is just power your refrigerator and some lights, then I see why you would get a solar generator over a gas generator. Talking about your relationship with battery suppliers, like how? Um, I talk mostly to distributors, I would say. So battery suppliers, because I don't want to distribute. I know I can do it and I could buy a warehouse and do it, but I love seeing all of the distributors compete with each other. And then I just jump on the affiliate program that I like. So then I can just focus on educating people and being unbiased. Like for example, big battery, when they messed up the circuit breaker wiring, I can just drop it, drop it from the site, tell people not to buy it. And instantly I feel good. I can sleep at night. But if I were to be part of that company and someone in my company screwed up and it made me look bad, I would just hate that. But in the position I have right now, they like fight with each other. And then I just, I just choose the winner. And then everybody wins. Like my viewers get to win and you get to see exactly what I like and dislike. So that's nice. Especially if you're, you know, spend 10 grand on a battery, you, you better hope that it's good. So... What's a community battery bank, William? <laughs> when you say we. So in my videos, I say we all the time. And it's because I'm trying to teach. And I feel like I say, we never want to do that, you guys. And I used to be a gymnastics coach. I used to be a swim coach. I used to always work with kids. And I would say, well, we don't want to do that. Or, oh, we do want to do that. So I think it's just 
um, fell into this uh, career that I have now with the videos. I just say we all the time in the videos because I want to feel like the viewer because it's it's all of us. You know, we're all like learning together. Don't buy a universal. Um, I, I've seen some with solar charger and wind chargers. Get a dedicated solar charge controller that's name brand and get a dedicated wind charge controller with its own little resistors and stuff. But yeah, don't don't buy an all-in-one. The all-in-ones for those are like the cheapest Chinese stuff out there. So I would not trust that those would work for very long at all. Showing setting up every all-in-one you have Man, that's what people keep asking me to make videos on how to do the setup for split phase output on the grow watts and the MPP. And like, man, it's just such a simple thing. Like there's one schematic and there's two settings. You just change it and you say, this is one, this is two, and then it works. I don't even know why anybody wants me to make a video on that, but I have been asked at least 20 times about that one, so maybe we should do it. Do you guys really think we should do that? I don't know. I feel like I'm wasting my viewers' time doing that. It would probably be like a 30-second video. <laughs> is it true that you need less solar if you have lithium? You know what's crazy, guys, is if you have a flooded cell battery, and it's at a high state of charge, like 95%. Going from 95% to 100, the coulombic efficiency drops to like 55% from the studies that I've read. And when you go from like 95 to 100 with lithium iron phosphate, it will slow down, but the efficiency is still very high. There's not much heat being created. It will slow down, but um, the speed at which you can charge the lithium with a certain amount of like um, power is just so much faster and so much effic efficiency throughout the whole thing. If you have a flooded cell and it's at like 50% state of charge, the um, coulombic efficiency is quite high. It's like sometimes 85% or higher. If you have an AGM recombinant system, um, it's like 95 or even 98% sometimes. It really depends on which one you're using and what the state of charge is and the temperature. But it's just, isn't that incredible? So yeah, lithium is preferable efficiency-wise and speed-wise. You can charge that thing all the way up. Usually you're at like 98% and then it starts to drop the current um, because those batteries are so big and the C rate is so low. So for solar applications specifically, lithium is preferable in every way. It charges so fast. Like it will take every little um, electron energy potential going through those conductors that you can create. Um, you know what's funny about MPPT is like pulse width modulation from the input to the output is very highly efficient. It's like 99 something percent. But the power availability at that voltage for your solar panel at that temperature is very low. And so the pulse width modulation controller will only do 70%. But an MPPT is like way more power availability, but from the input to the output, the converter circuit actually takes more power. And I mean, it's like 97%. Sometimes it can be 89% is the lowest, especially if the voltage differential is great. So imagine if you have 600 volts on your roof and you have a 12 volt battery bank, like that's completely unrealistic. But the converter efficiency is not gonna be very good. It's gonna be like as good as an inverter. Maybe not, yeah, actually, yeah, about 10% loss, maybe 15 or 20. Um, it's funny though, just to think about how that works. Anyways, let's see these comments real quick. Any videos on e-bike batteries? Hmm. You know what? We could do lithium polymer. I'm not a big fan of anything else for batteries because the specific energy matters so much and you want a low center of gravity. So especially with a fast... Oh my gosh, my cat is in the background. Hey, kitty. Come here. Come on. All right. He doesn't want to play right now, but he's he's so sweet. I love that kitty cat. Do you play Ark? I don't play that game. Wow, I know. 700 viewers. Holy cow, you guys. Is one Battleborn enough for the AC2000 inverter? Is that... 
Which one's the AC2000? I don't remember the manufacturer. We need some more split phase output, like 4,000 watt inverters for off-grid use. That would be pretty cool. I want to start testing some of those. I might get a Victron. I might get the Multi Plus 2. I think that sounds like a fun system. Yeah, I have the thermal gun. Wow, I am really behind on these comments. I'm sorry, you guys. There is a lot, though. Oh, um, Baduk, I have a video on what tools I recommend, and I get into very deep details on exactly what I like and dislike about certain electrical tools. Oh, thank you, Tim. Oh, lithium iron phosphate batteries in parallel first and then series or series first then parallel. Critters Crops Cuisine. I actually have a video on that specifically. Just type that into your search bar. Um, yeah, I specifically that point that I made and I even made a battery in front of you. It's a really good, I think it's a very useful video. It gets shared a lot. I know. Well, all my money is going to investments, Pulse Jet. Like, even though I make a good amount with this whole YouTube thing, I don't see any of the money. Like, this this shirt has bleach stains and holes. Like, I don't want to spend any more money. Um, yeah, but I, I need to spend more money on the business. I need to uh, I need to make a larger, like, laboratory, and I need to get a heat camera and stuff like that. Oh, thank you, Harley. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's so nice to see wires through conduit and hot spots on inverters. My thermal camera is awesome. Hey, Dylan, what thermal camera are you using? I know that the pixel density or resolution for those increases the cost a lot. So it would be nice to hear what you guys have to say about that. Like if I should get a, a high pixel density one. Wow, this guy made a 100, or Natty's girl made a $100 thermal camera with Adafruit. Wait, how did I get here? I just had autoplay on. So people are actually being pushed into this live stream just through autoplay. How crazy is that? Idle current consumption on inverters. Man, in power saver features. All right, that's a good idea. We're going to write that that one down. In safety features. Okay. <laughs> I was electrocuted yesterday. But it was so small. Like if I work with higher voltage, like battery, I don't even work with high voltage batteries. That's what my friends do. And it scares the crap out of me, you guys. Um, my friend, EV, I can't say the name of the business. Anyways, he converts electric vehicles and he works with 600 volt batteries, 400 volt batteries. And it just scares the living, I mean, daylights out of me. <laughs> I'm not going to touch a high DC ever. Um, AC is different. Usually you can always turn it off or whatever. And then it doesn't matter a whole lot, but DC man, that's never off. It's scary. Very, very scary. Oh, there's fireworks outside. I don't like fireworks. Like I liked them when I was 10 years old and now I'm like over it. Does anybody else feel that way? And then I don't want my house to catch on fire. So I'm going to stay here and watch it. I just, it just seems so childish. I mean, I like things that explode. I do, but I don't know. Sparklers don't get me that excited. <laughs> and I would rather watch like a professional show, not like one illegal firework and then boom. And then I just go home. Like, it's just so silly to do that. Um, I've seen some cool shows posted online in Singapore. That would be pretty cool to see that. I need to go out there and do that. I got tested again for the virus and I've negative. So by the way, again, I got tested twice for the antibodies.
Black View BV9900 Pro phone. It has a thermal camera on it. All right, let's look at this. Wow. All right, I need to look at the reviews of this. Wow, the reviews look pretty good. All right, cool. I'm going to look into that. Thank you so much. I do not like solar tracking at all. I don't like solar tracking as much as I do not like wind power, you guys. It just doesn't make economic sense. I like cheap. I like powerful. And solar tracking doesn't doesn't make me happy at all, especially with the variance at my latitude with the sun. Like right now it's summer, it's going like all the way over there. And then it's gonna be all the way over there. Like, I don't like it. I'm not a big fan. Um, I know that seems like more reason to do it. I think tilting is plenty because if you think about the atmosphere and the photons and which way they have to go and how much they get filtered when the sun's at a low, um, like if it's right above the horizon, even though you have a bunch of sunshine, you don't have that much at the wavelength required for solar panels to produce electricity. You make lots and lots and lots of electricity when it's right above you. So what I found is I almost made the same kilowatt hours that I did on my RV when all the panels were parallel to my roof as I did when I tilted them. And I was like, why am I even doing this? Like, why, why even tilt them if I could just slap them on the roof at peak sun time? And whether the sun's in winter or summer, it's going to be kind of overhead. So, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan. I'm more of a fan of keeping the panels cool and living in a hot area. But, yeah, the solar tracker, for what it's worth, even the cheapest solar trackers, you could buy more solar panels. I just, I'm not sold on them. If somebody can prove me wrong and show me a cheaper system. I, I've seen some new ones too. I've seen the one where it's like heat and you have like this lever system. But yeah, I'm not a big fan. And it can fail. There's moving parts. Like why don't you just want to have a solid state system? Like I personally would. Yeah, fire suppression for electronics. I need to do that. You know what's really cool, you guys, is when I'm doing my uh, system testing, I have my webcam, and we can look at it right now. So check this out. I have to make sure there's no personal information on my phone before I show you real quick. But uh, yeah, check it out. We've got the solar shed, and I check on it all the time. Some people were saying I need to get a thermal webcam so then I can check on it, but I can see the temperature. Sometimes I can see the voltage. I'll position the camera differently. Right now we're charging the Titan with this bank because I was trickle charging this for a couple days. So now I'm dumping all that power into the Titan. Um, I'm still using the Titan for solar, uh, I mean for air conditioner exclusively powered off of solar so far. I've been having some problems though because it's getting so hot in its summertime. It's like 100 degrees outside at night, like at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, it's still 100. So I have new arrays. I have three arrays total. Actually, I haven't even done the math on how big that thing is. Let's do it real quick. So we've got 540 watts plus 600 watts plus 270 watts. So we have 1,410 watts. And it's barely enough to keep that shed at 86 degrees Fahrenheit 24 hours a day. So pretty difficult, you guys. Wow. VA Hospital Houston, Texas has solar grid tie three phase in a solar water heater. That's pretty sweet. I don't need any of my batteries, really. I mean, I <laughs> remember when I made the Frankenstein solar shed, it was like 14 kilowatt hours. It's such overkill. That thing could run the air conditioner for like a week. So yeah, I took that out. I'm not, actually not a week, like three to four days. I took that thing out. Um, now we only have a 4,800 watt hour battery. And then we've got the Titan with four kilowatt hours. And then we're going to have a 24 volt system up and running soon. See, I say we all the time. I don't know why. I just always say that. Oh, 
Oh, people would say that I'm taking a medication because I'm so happy. I've actually been pretty happy most of my life. I mean, even with the nerve disease and stuff, I'm just a pretty happy guy. And even if something bad happens, I always think of it as an opportunity. Like most of my studying occurred when I couldn't walk. And I couldn't walk for so long that I would just be like, well, I'm just going to get smarter. <laughs> and I just kept reading more and more books. But um, I read a lot of stuff that really doesn't matter, though, like, like the space stuff. I love space, but I feel like a lot of what I studied was kind of a waste of time. I, I should have focused more on electricity, on nuclear power. I think that that's important because that powers everything here ever. <laughs> it's thermonuclear decay and you got fusion and that's it. So I think it's important is from a science um, perspective of the world to understand your power sources. Um, what else? Yeah, physiology was very important for me to study. But yeah, then I would just get concerned with these random things that don't matter in my life. And I would just read forever. And that wasn't that wasn't very healthy. Like you only have so much of your brain that you can fill up. So in so much time. Automotive, automotive wire can be used for solar application only indoors. If you have to go outside like the solar input wires, you need to have UV rated, UL listed solar wire. Wow, Tim, you saw my plantar fasciitis videos, that channel. That's so cool. I'm so glad that channel is still doing well. I started that like eight or nine years ago. Let's see here. Would you like to meet my daughter? <laughs> Is that what you mean, Jeff? Did you already talk about the AC200? Yeah, briefly. I haven't been testing it much. And I felt bad about the other YouTubers because I didn't. Um, I released the video too early. I didn't see that part of the email. And they just sent it out a month later. And I was like, all right, let's just make a quick video. And you never know what's going to happen. At first, I was excited, but I was like, all right, don't think too much of it because it might fail miserably, just like everything else. It's just crazy how much stuff fails on this channel. Like, I feel like we're becoming like a, str a stress test destruction channel, and I didn't even try to. It's just because all of it's so junky. But if I start testing high quality UL listed inverters, which cost, you know, seven to 12 grand. Um, for the really good battery backup ones, um, we're not going to have any failures. Those things work instantly every time and they're awesome. But I know a lot of my channel members are not going to like me, you know, talking about the more expensive systems. So we'll see. We'll try it out. I want to do a little bit of everything. I like micro systems. I don't know why this thing doesn't focus all the time. But yeah, I like micro systems. I like big systems. I like all sorts of solar Solar systems are cool, man. I mean, obviously, <laughs> I, we have this channel, you know. See, look, I just said I and then we, we have this channel. I, I think you guys are part of it. Like, if you weren't here watching this, it would just be me talking to a wall. Could you do a Titan teardown? You know what's funny is when something works well, I don't want to open it up because I don't want to screw it up because they won't send me out another one. I know that these companies send me out products all the time, but I only get one chance usually. If I destroy them, they're like, well, all right, we'll send you the upgraded version in a year. And I don't want that to happen with the Titan because it costs so much. But it is modular, so if I did break it, I could probably replace whatever I break. So you know what? I should do that. That would be pretty fun. EA Sun versus Powland versus No Name Hybrid. I tried a few No Name prototypes of the MPP solar equivalents, and they were junk. They failed every single time. I would hook it up to power, and they would go into safety mode for no reason. There is something about MPP's firmware that sets it apart. But just so you guys all know, let me just verify the name of that company real quick. Yep, here we go. Um, UPS, PV inverter manufacturer. The, it's all Voltronic. Voltronic is the supplier from what everyone's told me. But yeah, it's funny because MPP puts their label on it, but they also put their firmware. So that's why they work so well. And I had a friend tell me that 
a nice expensive inverter is not necessarily the components, it's the software and the safety features that they program into it and how they derate it. Uh, I know the MPP, they told me in an email that they do conform to most like UL listings and just to pay for it costs a lot of money. Um, and it's understandable. I know one company spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that UL listing. But the moment MPP Solar becomes UL listed, guess what, you guys? That thing is going to cost like two or three times as much. It always happens. So I know everybody wants it to be UL listed, but I'm like, hey, if it conforms to safety standards and people use it for seven years without issue and you can swap out boards, you might not want them to be UL listed so that they're super cheap. But I don't know. Lots of opinions on that. You guys can disagree with me if you want. Dang it. I always forget about lithium titanate. I agree, Allison. We need to do lithium titanate videos. Oh, there was a super chat that I did not see. It says. Nope, I don't see any other ones. Let's see. Nope. Maybe I missed it. Can you rewrite it? I don't do commercial consultation. I'm not qualified for that. I'm good for, oh, overland and van building? I don't like consultation. Ugh. <laughs> I'm trying, that's why I got rid of the social media is I'm trying to have my own life again. Like just work out, read books and focus on my life. Cause man, when you start doing consult work, they start emailing you and calling you and you have to respond and you're trying to do other things for yourself or you're trying to educate yourself and it's hard to do that, keeping up with, you know, the technology and everything. And the money doesn't matter to me, you guys. I, I paid off the house. I don't even care because people will be like, I will pay you this much money. You, you can have all of this stuff for free. And I'm like, well, I don't really need the money. I have nowhere to put that stuff. And like, I'm just like giving my stuff away to friends. I just... I don't know. <laughs> I need to figure out a way to do this. I, I am definitely not taking advantage of this whole YouTuber status. <laughs> it's, I mean, all I cared about was paying off the house. Like everything else is like, whatever, you know, I feel like that's all I care about and energy independence. And next, what would be cool is finding a way to like extract water and, or just have a well system. Or I want to have like a solar powered dehumidifier that I can extract water from the atmosphere and then filter it. That would be really cool. I can't do it here in the desert, I found out, because I'm looking at the AC condenser, or is it the condenser on the, yeah, I condense it. Oh, wait, but you're condensing the refrigerant fluid. So is it the condenser on the outside or is that on the inside? I forgot. Anyways, um, there's no water coming from it, right? There's no water. It's like 1% humidity <laughs> in the backyard right now. I have a weather meter and I just can't believe it. There's no water back there. So I think maybe I might have to get a house in a place that's more challenging for solar. And then I could, because here it's like 30 kilowatt hours every single day with my 4.5 kilo, kilowatt system. So like there's no challenge anymore. It's just so easy to, you know, absorb that solar power. Maybe a place in Idaho, guys, think about that. I can make a, I could also have hydroelectric. So I don't like wind power anymore, but I love hydroelectric. That is so cool. I could make like a tiny little, a little mini power generator system so easily too. Most of it's just the labor of diverting the water. That's the hardest part. The wiring and stuff is like a joke. Three phase power. Honestly, just get an inverter and hook it up. Do you want to be fully off grid though, Mushu? Oh, it's, let's see. I wouldn't, you don't need a battery disconnect. You need OCPD and that's it. I like to use circuit breakers as mains disconnect or for solar input. 
I, there's no point of having the battery. It's, you're going to stress the battery, and if it has FETs, you're also going to stress the capacitors so, to some degree. I just don't see a benefit of having a switch. I want, I want the battery directly connected to that inverter with OCPD to protect the appliance and the conductor, and that's it. That is what I read in the books, and that's what makes sense to me. If you look at the Marine books, sometimes they'll have a disconnect, but it's just for some other random reason or something. Um, PV input disconnect, sure, but yeah, use a circuit breaker. Don't don't buy a switch. You're going to have another fault point. What if that thing melts? You want to use a circuit breaker that's rated, UL listed, and then if you want to turn it on and off, use the circuit breaker. I have not seen it, Jerry Smith. I'm glad you had fun out here. I'm glad you had a cool trip. I got your message. I don't even know if I responded to it. See, that's why I got rid of the social media, you guys. I just, I cannot keep up with the messages. The form will have 10 messages every time I log in. The email will have 10 to 100. It's like, man, you just need to like focus on your work only. Hey, Will, have you ever looked up two different cell chemistries? with MPP solar inverters paralleled for a single 220 volt AC system. I would not do that. I would not do that, Casey Jones. You know why? Um, even though it's the same amp hour, you're gonna get different performance at different voltages. If you have a titanate system and you have a lithium iron phosphate and you have the same output and you have different C rates and stuff, one will be more efficient than the other. The lithium titanate efficiency drops pretty quickly when you have a high rate. If you have a large inverter doing split phase, you're going to see that in your numbers. And if they're off every single time you cycle by a little tiny bit, that will um, increase over time. And I guess with solar, if you have two separate arrays, you could technically do it. But actually, wait. Uh, no, that would work, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't do that, though, anyways. I wouldn't want to do that. You should cycle one battery bank, one BMS. A lot of people always want to have like multiple batteries, multiple BMS and multiple inverters. Um, I like multiple inverters, but when it comes to BMS and batteries, I would not have them different. I want them the same age, same temperature. I want one side of the battery to be the same temperature as the other side of the battery. I want everything to be nice and equal and they all charge and discharge together. That's very important. Um, most longevity studies talk about that and at low C rates. So very, very important. I mean, you could seriously have a battery system and let's say it's on a boat and one side of the battery is next to an exhaust manifold, right? Or an exhaust pipe. And there might be a heat shield, but the ambient temperature on that side is higher. You're going to have increased degradation on that side of the battery bank. And guess what? Guess which cells you're going to start swapping out first. It's going to be the ones on the higher temperature side. You might have more performance, lower resistance, all the other things, higher capacity, but it will be the first one to die. Um, yeah, very important. Think of the batteries as one. When they're in series and parallel, just think of them all working together to charge and discharge. The moment one battery takes the grunt work of other batteries, the whole system falters. The whole system will falter. Even in a Tesla, if one cell shorts and it disconnects from the other, that amount for an in-series chain, you will have decreased capacity for all the other series strings in your battery. Very important point to make. Yeah, Northern Idaho, Cordy Lane, beautiful. I would love to move there. Totally agree, Greg. That would be fun. I could build like a little mini farm and everything. Not a farm. I don't want to grow vegetables. I want to grow, I want to do aquaponic system with microgreens, all solar powered, so that I can get the same amount of food, but with a, a, a hundred times less work. And it'll be solar powered, so I don't have to do anything. That would be pretty cool. You know what would be cool is just have a simple Arduino or a Raspberry Pi that controls um, like the pH of the system and all the other things, the nitrogen balance. That would be pretty incredible. And it's not that hard to do, you know. Actually, no, What's you have to buy a pretty sophisticated sensor system. But not really. If it's, I don't know, I have to look into it more. I'm somewhat ignorant on that stuff. 
Surge protection for low voltage and solar. Ah, surge is so boring. <laughs> Just put a surge strip and then use those surge protection devices um, through, what is it, midnight solar? Just slap a couple of those on, on your panel. You'll be fine. Is welding cable good for high current connections? Yes, it is. But just make sure the insulation is rated for your environment. If it's, you know, um, high moisture or high vibration, it will work, but I wouldn't, I would go for marine grade. I don't even know what happened in that, buddy. I completely disconnected from them 100%. I liked them because they actually had a good product and service, but they're just so, not service. They had a good product and the service they were selling was good, but their customer service was absolutely horrendous. I couldn't even get a hold of them half the time. Um, they would run out of stock all the time. It just it drives me nuts. So yeah, I don't, I don't want to deal with them ever again. I did like what they had though. So, and I did mention all the complaints that I had. Yeah, aquaponics is pretty self-regulating in nature, isn't it? Ooh, Atlas says, Will, hydro is surprisingly high maintenance. I have a ball and greenhouse program that I made a while back. It's controlled almost everything, but I still needed to check on it. Permaculture is the way. Oh, man, you totally got me thinking again. You're so right. I read a permaculture book, and it was life-changing. It's so cool to have some kind of, like, system where everything feeds each other, and you can do that in a yard. The aquaponics is more maintenance, and then, like you said, hydro is high maintenance because, man, every time you have moving parts, it's a pain. Like, how long is a hydro system going to last compared to a solar panel? Like, solar panels just keep working. You know, it's nice. I just, it's so hard not to do that. Hey, kitty. Come here. He doesn't look bored. He just makes that face all the time. Come on. They're all curious. I have another cat over there. Let's see if there's anything that, okay, good. <laughs> His name's Tater Tot. Hey, kitty. I love my cat so much. Uh-oh. My monitor is off. I just pressed the power button. Hold on, you guys. Just chill for one second. Oh, okay. We're back. We're back. My screen turned dark. I had to show you my cat. So, <laughs> What brand of hybrid inverter for 230 volt 400 should I get? 400 volts for input, right? For the solar and then 230 output. You should get Soul Arc. Soul Arc on paper seems to be the best. I don't have one yet. But it is actually UL listed and high quality. Um, it's on par with the best of the best out there right now for quality and long-term use and efficiency. It's more efficient than everything, including the Tesla Powerwall. So um, the Tesla Powerwall, I don't think is very efficient. I mean, it is um, for being the design that they have is an AC coupled system, I believe. Let me look at the thing real quick. Okay, yeah, I don't like the in-phase one or the Solar Edge one either. Those ones aren't that fun. Wow, my internet is slow. Can you guys see me all right? I hope it's working. But yeah, AC couple, Tesla Powerwall, and then also the, the battery that they use. I don't like a high-specific energy, low-cycle life battery being used for off-grid application. The reason that you have the Tesla warranty with that chemistry is because you have to be connected to Wi-Fi and they cycle it themselves so they can hit those charge cycle life numbers. Let's see what that's at. So um, 10 times, well, if you cycle it every day, 365, so yeah, 3,600, you can hit that charge cycle life count with NCA or NMC even, but I don't want that. I want, like, imagine if you design a system with a Soul Arc and a Simplify, you have 10,000 cycles. So, and that's guaranteed, and you can still use it after that. So, let's say you're going to get like three times the life minimum or so. Hey, kitty. But yeah, I want to show you guys this cat. He is so big. Come here, kitty. Oh, boy. 
Look how big this Maine Coon is, you guys. He's 21.6 pounds. <laughs> Look at this big. He's a big, healthy boy. Look at this body. He's a big kitty. People, when they pick him up, they're like, what the heck? Is this a cat? He feels like a little dog or something, man. He's a big, he's a big boy. Isn't that right, kitty? He's so cute. <laughs> All right, yeah, I would go for Solark and Lithium Iron Phosphate, personally. The other cat, he's he's sweet. He just has a weird resting face. Did you see the comment to use a 30-amp outlet from the... Uh-oh, kitty, you better not. He almost pressed the power button on the computer. God dang it. I'm sorry, okay. Um, use the 30-amp outlet from the Titan to a distribution panel. I'm going to do that. I'm going to order that cable and do that. That is the plan. Man, I like Gandale. Yeah, me and Jihu were going to make some videos and stuff, and I met him a few times, but we're very different. We have very different priorities and values and stuff, and I don't think he likes doing the batteries. He would. He was saying that he didn't want to do it forever, and, like, he. I think he wants to, he wants to help um, dogs that are orphaned, and then he also wants to do EV conversions, so yeah, he's, he's a bit different. I'm more like electronic based and I want to do that because I like it. And that's all I've been doing. I was talking to my mom last night and like everything I'm doing today for work is what I was doing when I was 13. Like I was just building circuits. I just had a breadboard and I would find little instructions and I would build things. And all I'm doing now is electronics. So yeah, pretty much 20 years later, I'm doing the same thing. It's pretty great. Soul Arc is terrible. I really like the Schneider XW Pro right now. Why is that, Matthew? I would love to hear your opinion on that. Yeah, the Schneider is pretty sweet. They cost a lot, though, right? How much is it? Actually, it's probably the same cost as the... Actually, this looks really cheap. 6.8 kilowatts for 3,000? And this is off-grid off battery backup, right? Let's see. Let's find it. Is there, is there a battery for this? I can't find it. Oh, yeah. Wow. You can use lithium ion HEMGL flooded and use up to 10,000 amp hours. Man, Schneider. I've read about them, but I didn't know they made this. This is freaking gorgeous. Gosh, thank you so much, man, for showing me this. It's only $3,000. 48 volt charger, 6.8. I could throw this on my house right now. Man, that's so cheap. I wonder what, wow. Yeah, okay, cool. Good point, man. Thank you. Yeah, he's a mini mountain lion, not kitty cat. I don't take emails to troubleshoot systems. I did when I started. I just, I can't do it. I've got my own stuff that I'm trying to troubleshoot. Let's see, solar setup with everything in metric. <laughs> hey, I like dogs too. Just because I have cats doesn't mean that I don't like, I like all animals. When I was a kid, I had all sorts of insects. You guys, I found a praying mantis in my house the other day. In my house, how cool is that? A baby one, it was so tiny. There's so much cool wildlife out here. It's beautiful. I don't like magnums. Those inverters seem to have problems. Yeah, there is a little, I'm not even gonna mention it, Never mind, Rick, I'm, I can't respond to your comment, but yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> he is, uh, he's very different. Yeah, I met a Maine Coon at my friend's house and that thing was so sweet. And I was like, what the heck? This isn't even a cat. Maine Coons are pretty much like dogs. Like I'm trying to play fetch with mine. You can put them on leashes. They, they're big, they're slow and they just take naps all day. My furniture looks perfect. Like most cats, they run around and they scratch stuff and they always want to bite you and scratch stuff. These cats have never scratched. The other one does bite a little bit because he got declawed, but um, that's what happens when you declaw them usually. But this one has never ever done anything at all. You guys can see my little onyx. 
<laughs> the view of the video looks so funny. Hey, Onyx. Come here. Come on. Oh, well, usually he always comes when I tell him to. More than the other cat. Why aren't you a vegan? A vegan? I'm not a vegan. I was vegan when I was younger. I don't know why. I was probably influenced heavily by the environment there. You know what changed my mind is I was like, why is it that there's plants that eat meat? And then I ate a little bit of meat and I felt way good. And also my nails and my hair were kind of screwing up. I still think people eat too much meat and too much junk food though. And I think that vegan diet can actually help a lot of people, but I don't think it's the best. I don't think that physiologically it makes sense for me at all. Um, there's lots of nutrients in meat that are good, but it can be overdone. So yeah, I'm not on either side of that. I have made my own diet over the years. But most people would might even think I'm vegan because I eat so many vegetables every day. All right, let's see. Electrodocus is needed with the MPP LV2424 if it's equipped with a MPPT. What? What do you mean by that? Oh, if you have a separate one. Yes, because you want cell um, level monitoring for the line, high and low voltage disconnect. Oh, interesting, Sam, about surge protection when you're replacing gate motors and intercoms every year. Why don't you just add surge protection? Good point, though, on that. That is true, huh? You have, like, long wire runs, right? And there's potential and charge that develops. A lot of van guys charge lithium-ion batteries with high-amp alternators. Don't you need a DC-to-DC -DC charger? Yes, you need a correct charge profile for your chemistry. You need it to have current limiting, which requires external regulation of some form. You also need to have temperature coefficient compensation if you're going to have a lead acid or any temperature sensitive battery that does not have like a low temperature protection cutoff on the BMS. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I don't know why the van and RV crowd does that. Even when I first started, I was like, I don't know guys, like we are directly connecting parallel a starter battery and charging system to an AGM battery. Like I was a kid and I thought that was a bad idea. I was like, that doesn't make sense at all. Just how they work. Like that's something you would never, ever, ever do in any, any other circumstance. But for some reason, people think that it's fine in that application. And yeah, that just doesn't make sense to me. Yes, I am not a soy boy. Yeah, don't eliminate the meat, but eat meat still. That, I'm totally with you, Mike. In good meat, like venison, and uh, I eat bison a lot. And uh, what's it? boar, wild boar. I love wild boar. Is there a limit you would put on 24-volt lithium iron phosphate batteries? I was thinking about this when I did my last big battery. I would have OCPD on each one, but then I would add different levels of OCPD on top of that because if you have them all <laughs> triggered at the same time, man, that is some, that's some extreme power. So what I would do is I would have like OCPD with three parallel strings and that, the, that three parallel strings would be its own parallel string with its own second level of OCPD, whatever current I need. Um, because the larger you make the battery bank, you're not going to be having high C rates. So typically lower the C rate and then add more protection at different levels. But make sure that the protection will trigger first before the other protection. So let's say you have 100 amps um, OCPD on every single parallel battery string. Um, put like, um, uh, let's say you have three of them right? That's 300 amps. Let's just put a 200 amp circuit breaker on there. So that will trigger before the battery ones will. And then put another layer of safety up higher up if you have a massive battery. But at that point, it's illogical. The only reason I made that battery with that many parallel strings was because I had those batteries available. If I could run at a higher voltage and have a series string in parallel cells, then I would do that because that's just industry standard for design of battery packs. Um, I can't think of a single battery that's not like that. Tesla, 
Um, every single solar generator that we've ever tested, you have parallel, then you have series, higher voltage if you need it. Um, yeah. Shunts, that's a fun one, John. Shunts are a good topic to cover, possibly. Shunts are so cool, man. They're so simple, and they do so such good, accurate assessing of current... Oh, you're right, Jerry. I forgot about that. They have those in some um, some grocery stores. New uh, batteries that allow the owner to see the degradation at each cell. I would just do a capacity test on the whole battery, and then you'll find the lowest capacity cell instantly. So I, that's that's how I do it. Especially if you have like 16 cells in series, you can instantly find out that number just based off of one quick capacity test. Instead of taking apart the whole battery and stuff, man, that doesn't sound fun. Dang, there is so many people here, you guys. I hate mentioning my book because I don't want to sound like a salesman. That's like the only thing that I really sell that's mine. I hate mentioning it though. It's 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 great for beginners. I don't know if I want to do a advanced book though because I feel like we've covered everything on the channel now. And it's free. I'd rather the information be free than me having to charge for it. But I feel like the beginner book, I had to do it because nobody else did. And I was even meaning for it to be a book book. It was literally just for my friends. There was like a couple friends. I kept saying the same stuff over and over. So I wrote up that little handbook in like a couple weeks. But yeah, it's crazy how well it's done. If you are using 50 kilowatts a day, you want to build a solar power system that can give you 60 kilowatts a day, kilowatt hours. There's no way you want to get a 30 or a 35. You need, you need more power. I just talked to Jackery on the phone and they told me that they're working on something. They said the engineers don't want to have faster charging because of the chemistry they use. And I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? Look at the size of the pack. Look at the C rate. If your engineer is telling you that, you need to fire them because that is complete baloney. Because every other industry standard NMC automotive grade cell can handle 1,000 to 2,500 cycles at like 0.5 C charge rate. Why in the world would they have to lower it so, so low? Some of those are like 0.2. Or yeah, in seven hours, what is that? That's like less than that. That's crazy. So yeah, I don't know what these engineers are thinking. I think some engineers are not up to date. They just don't read the data sheets. They don't read the studies. They're just like, oh, I'm just going to slap a battery in here and do what I did in college. And college does not prepare kids, I don't think. I don't think so. Like some of the questions I... I some of my friends out, I'm like, what are you talking about? Let's see here. I did not. What do you mean? Okay, these are some confusing comments. Hold on, guys. I don't know how many copies I've sold of that book, you guys. It's just out of this world. The other day, I sold 130 copies in one day. And I've sold more than that, like 150 in a day. So who knows? Yeah, I don't know what he's saying. He's like, so <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not reading these. You guys, let's see here. I have an EV mountain bike, but not an EV dirt bike. I might get a carbon Kevlar belt drive system by Gates for my road bike. I might try that. That might be pretty fun. But yeah, I already have my uh, what's it called, Luna cycle off-road electric bike and it's awesome so i don't feel like i need anything more 
<laughs> want of fast says give you new ideas aren't you supposed to be a content creator dude we're people just like you i mean come on sometimes we get bored of videos sometimes i get so bored of making videos i don't want to make a video ever again and then sometimes i want to make hundreds of videos like i don't know everybody goes through that Let's see. Like when I was doing the shed rebuild, you guys could see how happy I was. I was like, I can't wait. I'm going to do this. We're going to build this awesome system. And then I start working and then halfway through big battery, they were like, we really want you to do this video, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right. I've been, I've been, and everybody kept asking about LV5048. So I was like, all right, I'll do the video. It'll help everybody. But I was so discouraged by the circuit breaker, by the safety mode of the BMS and everything. And then I had to film the second half of that shed rebuild system. And you could tell, I was like, all right guys, <laughs> like I was like not feeling it. So yeah, it depends on what I'm doing. Usually if I have some juicy solar drama and I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to tell them this one. Then I, I like making the video cause I'm like, or if I have something that I know is going to fail, then I'm like, all right, let's make a video. This is going to be great. I don't know. Jackery needs to get their stuff together. I, th I told them that they need a different engineer or something because the C rate that they, they say that the determinant factor is the battery. And it is true, but with what they're doing, taking seven hours to charge and half of their units have pulse width modulation controllers, I'm not buying it they're either being cheap with the circuit board or I don't, why would they do that? Maybe they're using grade B cells with low C rate. I don't know. If you guys disagree with me, let me know. Carbon batteries still, wait, what kind of carbon batteries? It depends. <laughs> These are funny comments. Yes, Sam wants me to give his wife Janice um, a call out because she says I'm the cutest. <laughs> Can you give her a call out? I don't know, man. I don't want to say hi to your wife on a live stream. That's just kind of weird. <laughs> Jeez, that's funny though. I had this one um, viewer. He said, my, li my wife doesn't watch solar anything. She doesn't like electronics, but she watches your videos every night and likes your voice. And I was like, okay. And he commented on every video for like some months. It's pretty funny. I didn't have many followers back then though. Oh yeah, the Chronic Injury Survival Guide. I put more work into that book than any other book I've ever written. I had to buy the rights for the photos. It took me like six months to write it. To edit it took longer than writing it. It took like seven or eight months for me to get that manuscript edited. It's probably my least popular book, <laughs> too. But the people that it helps, I think it probably helped a lot. So we'll see. It's very basic physical therapy stuff, too. And because I feel like most physical therapists, they can't help the rest of their life. And you have to, like, fix their whole life. If you're sitting in a chair all day and your back hurts, it's not – you can massage it all day and do exercises, but you need to fix how you move and what you eat and – you know, your actual life. So I thought that that book was very effective at giving like a full um, plan to help them. But yeah, anyways, that was, that was a fun time making that book. Man, I can't convince Battleborn to do anything. <laughs> They're pretty, uh, I can't get discounts. Um, I don't know. You know what I'm scared of? Battleborn is like killing it when it comes to like vibration proof mobile lithium iron phosphate batteries. Um, but there is just so much competition. I feel like someone's going to come out with that same kind of like rated battery in the next year or two for much, much cheaper. But if do will they have the customer service? Will they have? I don't know. I think I think they'll probably lower the price eventually. But uh, because right now, these cells are getting so cheap, you know, so um, I, I want to see what Battleborn does. I have no idea. Um, but as a company, I like them. They're like one of the only ones that are assembling in America. 
that's just incredible. They capacity test their own packs. Uh, most other distributors do not capacity test <laughs> every single battery or pack. They get a big old crate from China and they slap their sticker on it and then they just ship it out with their labels and that's it. That's all they do. They're just a, just, they're just a mail warehouse. They're just a distributor, but then they'll have like some customer service anyways. And then I have the guide to healthy, strong feet. That was another good book about, I was learning so much about physical therapy and ankle mechanics. I got really deep into it, like walking gait mechanics and how your body deals with those forces. So then when I was reading all of that, then I wrote that book and it was pretty good. But um, yeah, back in those days, I wasn't as scientific and I didn't list all my sources. Nowadays, if I have to substantiate a claim, I will show exactly where I got the information from. I did a recent plantar fasciitis video on that channel, actually. Sorry if this is off topic from solar, but um, and I showed my studies and everything. And it's nice to do that. What chair are you in? I'm in the AK racing chair. And these are pretty good. I like the uh, I don't like leather chairs. Those aren't they don't feel good. Like you get sweaty and sticky and they, it's gross. That's why all of my couches are that this material stuff, polyester. I don't know. Oh, thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Oh, thank you for reporting him. I didn't see who was doing that. Sorry. Oh my goodness, we're getting some different comments now. You have this shirt, Arian? I got this at a Goodwill. Um, and it's one of my favorite shirts in the whole wide world. Dang, I wish I could buy more of these. I actually found the best shorts. I don't want to stand up and show you my shorts, but they're Quicksilver and they're called... Hold on. They're called Highline Shorts. They are so comfortable. I bought multiples and I'm waiting for them to restock them so I can buy all of them in my size. <laughs> so funny, man. I need more clothes. Let's see. You know what drives me nuts is the textbooks for college. When I did printing cost, when I was publishing my drone photography books, I knew the cost of publica publishing those things, color pictures or not. And I was like, okay, it costs like five, maybe $20 max to make this book. And they're selling it for $200 to these students that are putting it on student loans. So they're getting into more debt. And it's just, man, it just drives me nuts how corrupt the college system is. I could complain for hours. My mom is actually going through a potential lawsuit with her college right now because these these freaking idiots, they had her on a contract and said, oh no, we're not going to raise the rates on you. And then they tried raising the rates. And so she went to an attorney and she was like, what are these guys doing? But yeah, school administration at the college level is just so illogical. It drives me nuts. Like I had to, I felt like, I don't know. I, I did not do very well in the college setting. I had to kind of learn almost everything I know on my own because that place was just such a joke. And the students are a joke. Man, half of them are on substances or alcohol, and <laughs> I wasn't. I was there to learn, and it just, man, it drove me nuts. I don't know why half those kids are in college. They they need to not be in college. They need to do something else. Let's see here. Would you ever consider to offer to be hired for? No, I'm not going to do that sailing, Yukio. I, I don't have time for consult stuff. I just can't do it. Anyways, let's talk about something more fun. I'm kind of going off topic. <laughs> yeah, I know you guys. Oh, man. It needs to be thought out better. And the funding for it. It's like a welfare system at this point. I knew kids in California, they would just sign up for college to get the Pell Grant funding check. And then they would spend it on things that I can't say on this channel and guitars and just clothes and stuff. It just drove me nuts. Like in skateboards and it drove me nuts, man. I went to Monterey Peninsula College, and that's the only college I went to. I actually, I got accepted into multiple colleges, but the one I wanted to go to was CSUMB because it was so cheap. And at that point, I didn't even care about the name. I was there for the education. 
Um, I always felt like if I put myself into a position of life where I didn't really need the college degree, all I need is the education from it. And so I felt like it was a good idea. But yeah, I couldn't um, um, justify the cost. It was just so expensive. I was like, what? Why would I do this? And then at that point, the health books started making money. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to write more books or study or just do my own thing. And I could barely walk anyways. I couldn't even walk that far. So it, it felt so good to get out of college for me because my nerve disease was getting worse and worse. Um, I started uh, my uh, college when I was 17. And um, so I was there until I was like, what, like three years solid. And then I just was out of it. And then by 20, my nerve disease was really bad. <laughs> my wife wants to see your shorts. Oh my gosh. There's decent EMF meters on Amazon. That would be pretty fun. Is it, is there any noise from the BMS? I don't think so. They're not doing any switching regulation. If you have it like a high voltage disconnect and you have a ham radio connected, I could see some noise being created. But yeah, I don't think most BMSs are going to do that. Salt water batteries seem pretty cool, but oh yeah, that's right. I got an email from one of them and the specific energy was so good in the charge cycle life. I forgot what the downside was. What was the downside of the salt water batteries? I know we need reputable producers for them. Oh, I wish we were friends in real life, man. I sometimes I read your guys' comments and I want to meet you, especially if you say something really cool and smart or like you're just kind of kicked back or if you get in an argument with one of my trolls on the channel and you like conduct yourself well, I'm like, damn, I want to be friends with that guy. That guy is a cool dude, but yeah, there's just so many people in the world these days. I got so overwhelmed with the Instagram, man. I just couldn't take it. And yeah, Pell Grants do great things as well. I mean, when it pays just tuition, you're, I mean, it's great. It's awesome. But why is the tuition so high for the school? Have you seen the adjusted for inflation, purchasing power with income over time and real estate costs? College has gone up more than anything else. That's not cool. I don't like when they do that. It's, it's going to administration costs and people are using loans to pay for it. So they don't care about the cost. They will pay any cost to go to college. And so they just keep upping the price. It's the same with houses. If you make those loans easy to get and accessible, they keep upping the price. So I, I don't know. I'm not a fan of that. Let me know if I sound ignorant right now. These are not topics that I study a whole lot. Oh, somebody was going to kill me? Is that what they said on the comments? I'm sorry. I missed some of the troll comments. Yeah, I still look pretty young, you guys. I'm going to be 30 soon. It's crazy, man. How can we break the college loan cycle? We need to not... First of all, pay off all loans, all mortgages, all debt, all credit cards. And then the banks will be like... <laughs> they will be screwed overnight. That whole system would just be so screwed. And then the next thing is boycott the schools. Go somewhere else. Go to another country. Don't do this... Don't do this ridiculous stuff. Also, check the cost of the school. Like, I checked every school cost tuition. I would go on the site, and you, would find, you could find it in fine print somewhere, the actual cost, and then you use that because I was going to pay for cash. But, yeah, when <laughs> – yeah, exactly, pay cash. Don't finance anything. And then some people are always like, oh, mortgage is a good debt. I don't think so. I think if you – the cost of houses would be less if people didn't have so much purchasing power and lever. They, they're so leveraged right now that they can buy these big houses. I mean, the the average down payment in America was what three percent down. Um, I don't know if that has to do with um, first time home buyer programs, but that's not okay. They, if if you can't afford a house, you shouldn't buy it. I mean, that's why I didn't buy this house until I could absolutely afford it. Um, yeah, I just I hate any form of debt. No debt here for Atlas. Heck yeah, man. Do you have videos? I forgot, man. 
Let me know if you have videos. I need to check them out if you do. Didn't you say that you were going to do something? I'm going to look up your name real quick, see if we got any videos. Nope, I'm not seeing anything. J.G. <laughs> <G>. Wentworth, <laughs> get cash now. The Federal Reserve changed the rules. Absolutely. You are so right. It used to be in this country in America that if you worked hard for something and you gave a good product and you helped others, you would get rewarded for it. But nowadays, they just bail out whoever they feel to bail out. You can be doing stock buybacks all day long and they'll give you free money from the Fed. It's just ridiculous. Anyways, <laughs> I will talk about that till no end. It drives me nuts. Atlas, you should try considering doing videos because I've seen your comments on other videos and they are very good. I think you have some good thoughts. It would be cool to have you make a YouTube channel or something. Oh, yeah, you are? Uh-oh, my kitties are about to... <laughs> what are you doing? Kitter tuck. Don't be mean. Onyx likes to hiss at the other kitty cat. I think they might hiss. They're a little territorial. Oh, well. Yeah, guys, September 15th for the million mile battery or what they propose to be the million mile battery and a higher specific energy for the Tesla in CA concoction or whatever they're building. Um, I'm probably going to buy another Tesla when that video or when they do that announcement because I want like a 500 mile Tesla, I think the Plaid will have it, but we'll see, like a tri-motor tri configuration. Colleges used to be a for-profit business until we had all these grants and funding, and then people are over-leveraged with these loans. So I don't think it's, they are for-profit, but <laughs> they're run like a welfare system, in my opinion. Oh, I'm sorry, Poker John. Yeah, I I feel like it should be more of a meritocracy where you are based off of your thoughts and ideas and how smart you are and how many people you can help. But nowadays, it's the name of the college. And then the admissions are so screwed by the testing and who they actually let in, which I don't want to get into the specifics. I think you guys know what court cases I'm talking about. I don't like that. That's not fair. It's highly discriminatory. And it's it's just welfare at this point. So yeah, and then subsidized loans. I don't think you should subsidize any of that. We need to have something to keep it in check because they're going to keep rising the rates of the tuition cost. And they've done that historically for the last hundred years. Look at that chart, guys. It's incredible. It's, it's ridiculous. And then, yeah, they screw you on the books too. Oh, I'm glad you got the book, Daniel. Thank you. I am not invested in any stocks right now because I can't predict it at all. It drives me nuts, you guys. When the Fed's buying corporate bonds, how am I supposed to know? I and You might say, oh, but you can make money off of it and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to support that. When the government does that, I, that's very unfair to people that have money in savings accounts or people that have worked very hard. And I don't like that. It's, it's, it's unfair. Yeah, I've learned more on YouTube than I learned in school. Actually, not really. Books, you guys have to do the books. There are very smart people writing books, and it's important, especially with electronics. There are guys that are complete geniuses, and they cannot go in front of a camera. It takes a, it takes a special mix of like technical know-how and like being able to talk in front of a camera. And uh, you know, some YouTubers are really, really smart, but they're not good at talking. Um, they're good at building. And then there's some people that are really good at talking, but they can't build. And that's like my carpentry skills. That's why I don't want to show any of my work because it's so bad. But I think I can talk. I think it's probably one of the, like, for example, when I was a gymnastics coach, always talking to lots of people all the time really led up to me being able to talk on this channel. And so, but when I was a kid, I couldn't really talk in front of people because I was so shy. Um, so yeah, it's that mix, you know, it's that mix. My deli BMS goes off when the voltage reaches the battery disconnect voltage. Even with the sun out, you have to change your high and low voltage disconnect, Michael, for your inverter and set the absorption manually on your MPPT. 
Yeah, man, Steven, I agree. They're selling these books at the college bookstores for 200 bucks and they cost like $20 to print. Drove me nuts. When I was looking at the print cost through, which one was it? It was the most largest print house in America. But the cost for printing these books is so low. And then these people keep using their loans to buy them. And so they just keep rising the prices because they can. People will say, I'm investing in my future for an education. And then they get ripped off. I just, it drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. Mm, best book recommendations. Okay, this is not a book recommendation because you guys don't need to read it. But this basic electricity book, it's so cool because it talks about how old meters were constructed. Let me show you an example real quick. I'm in the motor section, but I can I should be able to find the meter section. I'm showing how like the first watt meter and kilowatt meters were built. All you had was coils and little resistors. Like look at this one. Look at this one right here. Just a couple, whoops, can you see it? Yeah, couple coils, couple, one resistor, and you have a meter. Which one's this one? Is this just a resistance meter? I'm not sure. You have a hand-driven generator. So yeah, once you read this and you read like Nikola Tesla's patents, you get a fundamental feel for how some of these systems work. Um, look at this one. Electrodynameter watt meter circuit. So it's a, one of the first kilowatt ones. You have a current coil, a current coil, a voltage coil, and just how the fields interact will tell you the watts. How cool is that? It's a resistor and a couple coils, man. It's just, how cool is that? That is amazing. I don't know, when you look, it's, it's just good to know like where we came from. Cause you can sit there all day and just do everything to what they tell you with the meters. Like electricians, you just put your clamp meter on and you're like, oh wow, that's cool. And then you just move on, right? But when you see how we develop these ideas, this is when you get a very good intuitive feel for it. Um, and like building a transformer. Like once you build a transformer, you kind of get it. And transformers are so cool too. So I don't know. I think some of the the older older books are really cool. I like I, everything in here is so cool. Something I don't understand that much though, and I really need to read is um, alternating current modulation with grid tie inverters, like how they feed that. That's like witchcraft to me still. I don't know when I'll ever need to know how to do that because <laughs> I'm not designing the PCBs. But, or the circuits, I'm not designing the circuits, but it would be really cool to know about. And some of my forum members actually talk, touched on that a bit on some of our threads, but yeah, I'm a little bit ignorant in that regard. DC is so easy, man. It's just half the time it's Ohm's Law. It's just so easy. Oh yeah, book cover, here you go. Basic Electricity by, who is this? Uh -huh. Okay, it's just prepared by the Bureau of Naval Personnel. So this is for the Navy or Naval. Which Navy, though? I don't know. Maybe it's... Oh, it's the United States Navy. Okay. This is a training course text of the electrical fundamentals. This is good, though. And all the um, equations for the math are very simple. This one's a little bit crazy because you're doing sign stuff, but, like... Most of in cosine, but most of it's so easy. Like, look at these little diagrams, like little switches and stuff. I have some other books I could show you guys, actually. Hold on. Um, hold on one second. I feel like once you understand the basics, most of this information becomes redundant. I like this one for board repair, and it just talks about how FETs and capacitors and stuff fail. It talks about like capacitors and where the junky ones come from. Um, oh, whoops, sorry. Everything electronic, but this is a very common book. There's not much useful information for designing and building your own things. So not very DIY and not very theory. This is more component related. Next, if you're doing any wiring in a house, Black & Decker, The Complete Guide to Wiring, 7th ed edition. I mean, come on, look at how easy this is. Hold on. Like, come on, look at that. It's an outlet. It tells you any NEC and everything else you need to know. It shows you the foot, 
high for GFCI receptacles, for example. You need to get that perfect every time. I mean, come on, super simple. So yeah, wiring for houses, kind of boring though. I don't like doing <laughs> too much of that stuff. Um, DC circuit theory, this is a fun one. This is a great one. This one shows you just the math really, but once you understand the basics and then you do the math, then you're set. I did this a lot when I was a kid. I was doing a lot of troubleshooting, um, circuit design. I would build circuits myself, I'd modify them. So this became very relevant when in that time of my life. But nowadays I just use this as a reference if I'm trying to do something weird, like calculating like surge or something like that. But um, what other books do I have? Let's see here. Oh, this book is so good. Hold on. So this book, it's not relevant to solar, but it's great if you have large systems. Um, large current DC low voltage is the boat owner's mechanical and electrical ma manual. Super common one. Seriously, I wouldn't even touch it if I'm building a solar system, but there's lots of cool topics in this. Um, yeah, just like how grounding works and reference voltage and zero and sur like surge and all sorts of good stuff. Um, also external regu regulation of alternators. This one's really good for that. Also, I like the troubleshooting diagnostic section for low voltage DC. This one has a very complete one. Also the AC yeah, distribution, all of this stuff and transformer, that stuff is really good. Also grounding, like galvanic isolation. This one has that. It has a really good section with stories on it too, which is fun. And this is my favorite book for uh, life stuff. Um, it's called... The Art of Worldly Wisdom by Gracian. This is the only translation that I like. I do not like the other translations. They are hard to read and just silly. This one is really good, Gracian. Yeah, really good book. I don't even want to mention what it, it's like aphorisms for life, like just everyday logic and how to deal with um, other people and how to be smart and how to conduct business. I, I do not like many books like that either. I've read a lot and I do not like most of them, but that, that one's incredible. I like that one a lot. It's like, this thing's like a politician's guidebook and how to be a good family member and everything. Um, you can give other people advice when they don't understand. Like if you already have a pretty good life, some things are fine and dandy to you, but this will make you see how to control others that don't see it the same way you do, but in a good way so that they're, you know, living a better life. Anyways, that's very more involved to talk about. Have you ever played with a app called Every Circuit? I have not done that, Atlas. Let's see it. This is so cool. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Are you kidding me? Oh man, you guys should check this out. Everycircuit.com. It is so nice. Holy cow. Why didn't I have this when I was a kid? It's only 15 bucks. All right, I'm going to get this. It's just so cool. I'm probably never going to use any of it, but holy cow, this is so nice. Good, good point. What solar book do you recommend? So 99% of what I knew is I just read all the solar books at my library, but that's about it. Um, just go to your library and get every solar book you can. There's some older books. Uh, relevancy is questionable though, because we've gotten quite a few changes in our technology, especially batteries, but like how inverters work and how solar cells work, it's all the same. It's, it hasn't changed at all. I read that book and many like it. Cool, Steve. That's awesome. In Incaridian. I don't know what that word is. Hold on. Oh. Oh, a pick a picatus, right? Is that who you're talking about? Isn't he like a stoic? Was he around that time when they're yeah, stoic ethical advice compiled by Oh Arian. Okay. He was a disciple of a pick a picatus the Greek philosopher. I see. I haven't read this. Oh man, I don't even want to talk about this stuff because it's like another whole, we could look up so much other good stuff. Um, Marcus Aurelius, meditations and 
uh, Camus, <laughs> and then we lead down nihilism. So yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. How much is cheap per kilowatt hour um, for batteries or for a grid tie system? It's the best for building small to medium circuits. I know you just literally plug it in, it looks like. You know what? After you build the circuit on every circuit, can you just send it out to somebody to build it and they'll make the PCB and everything? I keep, I've seen those a few times. I've never ordered those before, but that sounds cool. Everybody needs to read schematics. You know what, man? I didn't even know what electricity was or what it did. But when I was a little kid, I read what every component does. And over time, you just kind of get a feel for it. And yeah, everybody needs to know what components do what and, circ and how to read a schematic. I mean, even if you work on cars... Mark Twain is one, a wonderful starting. You guys, well, I don't tell many people this, but by blood, I'm related to Mark Twain, which is pretty cool. I don't like mentioning it, though, because it seems cocky, because it doesn't seem like, you know, that he's my great, great uncle. So it doesn't seem like a whole lot. Um, like, think about how many great, great uncles I've got, you know, so I don't think it means much. You guys are probably related to him, too. So I don't think it's <laughs> that cool because we all mix together. But yeah, he's pretty cool. I think Mark Twain has good thoughts, but I don't, some of the stories were kind of all over the place. I felt like it was scattered minded, but he's a good thinker. I know some of my family said that about the writing. They're like, oh, your uncle wrote and now you write your books. And I remember Mark Twain, he didn't try to write books because he wanted to write books. He was doing it to make money for his other businesses. So... Yeah, he was more of a businessman and stuff. Mighty Max batteries. I haven't tested those. I haven't tested them. I'm sorry. I have no idea what that's in that case, man. Falstad simulator. Okay, we're going to look that one up. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to get off soon, you guys. I'm getting tired. Oh, look at that. It's so easy. Look at that. Even with the inductor, it shows you. That's so easy, man. That's so cool. Oh, gosh, that's great. I'm going to have to get off soon, guys. I'm starting to hit my wall. No way. Oh, yeah, Samuel Clemens. No way, Corvus, a Webster Dictionary writer. Those people are incredible. Anybody that did the older encyclopedias too, man, very smart individuals. It's very hard to take that much information from the world and distill it to like a couple of lines in a book. It's incredible. Can a BMS handle low quality cheap cells? Yeah, but I wouldn't do it. You have to match them, put them in parallel. I would test if they feed each other after they equalize. I'd put a load on it and I'd see if like one pack is, you know, well, it depends on how large the cells are. 18650s, you're not going to do that. I don't like, I don't like 18650s for solar. Okay, good night, Steve. See you later. Thank you so much for being here and deleting all those trolls transfer switch video that's a pretty smart idea i don't sleep in the master bedroom still guess what guys i actually have my king size bed inside that tiny tiny little room because it's so comfy and tiny and um it's dark and quiet and i can hear everything i just i like it i like it a lot Noah Webster knew 17 languages. That is nuts. Oh, really, Patrick? Every circuit offered you a short sample? Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, thank you, Patty. Oh, I appreciate that. That's sweet. You guys are so nice when you give donations. It's <laughs> I appreciate it so much. Yeah, the tiny room. People that visit me, they think I'm crazy. 
I think, I mean, even the lab and the solar shed are larger than my room. <laughs> but I'm sleeping. I'm not even conscious. So I don't need a big room. I mean, there's no point. I returned the two solar saga 100 watt solar panels for the Jackery. Did not work. Someone said if cells are too close together, one is slightly shaded, all cells don't work. Yeah, that's true, Patty. If the cells are obviously in series because it's a panel, um, if you shade any cell, all the cells connected to that cell will produce zero. Um, really? It didn't work? Those ones usually work. The new one is stronger too. Hmm. I would try to put in full sunshine, Patty, when the sun is like right above you. See if it works. Also, discharge the battery. If the battery is full, you won't be able to charge it because there's nowhere to put that, that power. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Yeah, you guys have funny cons. Gosh, what else was I going to talk about? I haven't done the bifacial solar panels. Isn't the cost pretty high for, and, I, and I'm not restricted on space. Yeah, big panels have bypass diodes to help with shading, but any cells in series, those ones are going to cut out. But yeah, if you have multiple big panels, the bypass diodes help significantly. I have not seen the sodium solid state battery from John good enough. Um, I know that they announced it, but to manufacture a new battery technology, it takes a while. DC appliance video in what, what regard? Hmm. Like, what, like, what do you mean, Tom? How many Battleborns do you recommend for? I would not use Battleborn for at-home solar. There's cheaper options. Discover battery is pretty sweet, in my opinion. It's expensive, though, but it's like the best you can get. Or Simplify. I don't like Simplify that much, but the warranty is 10,000 cycles. So, yeah, it's like 100 degrees outside right now. Vegas is super hot. By the way, I love living here. I can't believe how much I love it. Will, when buying a house that has an owned solar system, what would you look at or ask about? I would look at the roof to make sure that the roof doesn't fall apart so I don't have to pay extra money to take the solar array off. That's a big one, man. That roof costs more than your solar array, and people don't check the roof. And then um, also the lease, you have to qualify for the lease agreement. Uh, what else is there? I'd also look at the panel and everything else, make sure everything looks clean and new. Some of these houses in California from the 50s, man, it does it scares me. Oh, thank you, Randy. Good night. Take care. Oh, you're in Reno, Tech Electric. I was going to move to Reno, actually, but then the housing price went up, and I wasn't ready to afford those houses. What else do you want to know about house owned solar? I mean, if it's owned by the homeowner and you don't have to take over any stupid loan, then uh, and you can inspect it. Go into the attic, look at the the cross members, look at how it's mounted, look at how many panels are on there, and look at if it looks strong to you. Um, check for leaks and all that. Yeah, make sure that roof is pretty good too. Hmm. Solar concentrator, not really, not a big fan because it, it heats up the cell and increases degradation because the temperature is so high. So I do not like solar concentrators. I know you could get like a gallium solar cell and then you just have all like a Fresnel lens, right? And you'll have this crazy output and you'll be like, oh my gosh, look at this. It's like 40% and then like we're using only this small little thing to make all this power and like you can cool it with the Peltier. I'm not a big fan of it because no one's going to do it. Like it might make for a fun YouTube video and it will be 
um, entertaining, but it's not going to be useful or practical for my viewers. So I don't like that. Mexican or Italian food? I like Italian food more, but it, it makes me fat instantly. So I'd say Mexican because it's usually healthier unless it's like fried meat, then it's not. I don't know. I like both. I'm not picky with food though. Oh, thank you, Patrick. Metal roofs for the win. I agree, Alice. I want to find a non-HOA place in Vegas somewhere. And then I could just I could just fill that roof with panels and do whatever I want. It'd be so nice. I'm scared of doing wind power out here though, because the winds are so strong. It could just destroy that thing, man. It's it's very strong winds. Vegas is cheaper than Reno. I check the prices all the time. It's way cheaper. Uh, only buy bus bars if you need them, janky tech bros. You don't. If you don't need them, you don't need to buy them. I skip breakfast sometimes, but not all the time. I don't know. Yeah, good tip on the roof itself. Too focused on the rarity of a fully owned system. I'm sure a home inspector would catch any potential signs of leakage. I hope they do. Yeah. Yeah, it's just fat and starch with the Italian and Mexican food. It's it's a lot of a uh, lot of calories. Yeah, HOAs suck. But for my first house, I know this sounds silly, but it's only thirty dollars a month, and the the neighborhood is beautiful, right? It's gorgeous. And I went to non HOA neighborhoods down the street, and oh my gosh, man, it's just disgusting, horrible. So if I get a non HOA, it will be where people have like one acre each or like one fourth an acre or half an acre, something like that. And then I could, and then I don't care what the neighbors are doing. Everyone has like their own castle. There's some places with like mansions out here. Like there's some areas around like enterprise and uh, near the Tesla service center in Summerlin. There's some cool houses, non HOA that are massive and super cheap. So something like that. I want to build a pergola. I thought I was going to do it with the patio cover in the backyard, but I found out that it said it was solar ready, right? And then there's no support bars. And I was like, what? And so I think I got the wrong one. I was so bummed about that. Oh, thank you, Patty. I appreciate it. I can't believe how many donations have been in this feed. I just, I can't believe it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. In Texas, HOAs can't stop you from putting solar on your house. Yeah, we always have to ask for permission still. Five plus acres. Oh my gosh. Yeah, wind turbines are a little scary at that speed. Yeah, Reno. So get this. Reno's only like three and a half hours from Bay Area. So let's say you live in the Bay Area and you start making money, right? And you're like, oh, wow, I've got a million dollars. Where am I going to go? And then they see the state income laws in Nevada or the state income tax rate and stuff in the corporate. And they're like, oh, I'll just buy a house in Reno. And then once I get done with this tech job or if I start remotely working as a contract, I'm just going to go to Reno and then I'll just kick it. And so all of these tech guys went out there and bought a bunch of houses. So that's what's going on. Uh, because AC is not that bad. You know, what's funny is a DC converter with a large voltage differential. You're going to have like a five to 10% loss. Um, and those things can get hot. They have their own standby consumption wattage, uh, an inverter, same thing. I would much rather just have an inverter system so I can plug it in. There are more losses, but just the practicality of our appliances here in the United States, usually it's easier just to go with AC and call it a day. But yeah, some people will disagree with me big time about that one. Yeah. Dude, if you move from Bay Area out to Vegas, you'll love it. I mean, in my for me, I love it. Don't move to the bad areas, like spend money and go out to the mountains or something. Don't live in Vegas Valley, like live away from the strip and you'll be so happy. It's great. I love it here. I love it so much. It's not even funny. Tesla battery conversion would be a great project. I drove to San Diego the other day, um, right before they closed down again. So, yeah. 
they closed down again, which is unfortunate. We're probably going to close down soon here. We have the highest transmission rate in the country. God dang, I'm getting tired. I can see you guys can probably tell. We've got 600 people in my voice. I'm starting to lose my voice, so I need to get going. Darn it. We had some good comments tonight. Last time we had a bunch of trolls, and that wasn't fun at all. So I'm glad that we have some good people today. We had Atlas, we had Steve, we had all these great people. Thank you so much, Patty, and everybody else. It was great. But yeah, I need to go to bed. I'm too tired. But thank you so much for watching. Um, this video will be posted as like a video, right? So if you guys want to like share your thoughts or if you disagree with something I said, you guys can always put it under the video and it will be posted. That'll be a fun video. This was a good night. So yeah, I will talk to you guys soon. And thank you so much for watching and bye.